Hi, my name's Dylan Walker of wildlife.org and I'm out in a bit of a storm today and that kind of feels appropriate because it feels a bit like we're all facing a storm with the coronavirus uh, pandemic and that's having a massive impact on our lives. It means it's more difficult for us to get out, see our friends and family and we're limited to just um, one walk for exercise every single day and, and this video is all about us making the absolute most of that opportunity because it is an opportunity for us to rethink our lives, think about our connection with nature and our connection with wildlife and the impacts that we're having. Uh, so for this video I wanted to give you five of my top tips for making the most of that opportunity to get outside and get some exercise and also enjoy and reconnect with nature at the same time. So come along and take a look. One thing wild animals do so much better than human beings is use their senses. They're constantly alert. And so the next time you take a walk in the countryside and get closer to nature, why don't you try and do the same thing? For a start, you can listen really carefully to the sounds around you. Bird song and the wind in your hair, for example. Um, you can look at the detail of things. Try getting down on your hands and knees and looking at insects and plants really close up. It opens you up to a whole new world smell flowers that are around you. Really use those senses. And one really simple tip that I can give you to get closer to nature is to be quieter yourself. That makes you feel much part of the natural environment around you. And one easy way of doing that is by taking your shoes and socks off and walking barefoot. And I'm gonna do exactly that right now. now proof's in the pudding. And by taking your shoes and socks off, you're connecting to the ground. You're feeling um, the plants underneath your feet and you can walk much more quietly and listen to the nature around you more. And you're much more likely to get closer to things because they will be less aware of your presence. So try it, take a walk in nature, think about using all your senses and appreciate the natural world around you. I'm gonna do that right now. Ow. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Now, I absolutely love to see my children climbing trees, but why should they be the only ones? As far as I'm concerned, everybody from 7 to 77 should be able to climb a tree. A, because it's great fun. Secondly, because you get a different perspective on the world. And thirdly, it touches muscles that other exercises simply cannot reach. So if you haven't climbed a tree in the last year, I definitely think it's time that you got back out, found the perfect tree for you and climbed it. Just be careful of one thing though. Don't do what I'm about to do. Okay, I'm going to let you into a little secret here. This is my happy place. And this top tip is about finding your own happy place. A place where you can sit quietly and observe nature around you. As you can see, this is a pond. I personally am always drawn to water. I think ponds, are, ponds and lakes, rivers are fascinating places. They're always full of life, both above and below the water. Animals come here to drink. Uh, insects lay their eggs. In the, in the water and then those larvae emerge into insects back uh, into the air again. Bats will come here to feed. So it's always a really fascinating place to just sit and watch what's happening. It doesn't have to be a pond or a river. It can just be a piece of woodland, a quiet part of your back garden. The point is to just sit quietly, be part of nature and you'll find that nature just appears all around you and you become more observant and more aware. Things like flowers emerging, insects emerging, um, birds building their nests just by sitting quietly. So try and do that 10 or 15 minutes every day in your happy place and you can enjoy your place just as much as I enjoy this wonderful spot here. One of the easiest ways to connect with nature 
is through something called forest bathing. Now there's no water involved in this, but there certainly are trees. So all you need to do with forest bathing is take a yoga mat out with you, um, go and find a tree and lie under it. It could be in your park, in your, in your garden, or out in the countryside, just like this. Um, find a tree, relax, and scientists have found that this is actually incredibly good for us. It's good for our mental health, and it's actually good for our bodies. Uh, it helps us to uh, de-stress, uh, but incredibly, the trees around us are actually constantly emitting a chemical. It helps to protect them from predators such as caterpillars, um, but it also protects us. It protects us from a whole variety of diseases. So just by lying under trees, we actually become more resistant to disease. How awesome is that? So why don't you head out, find a tree for 15 or 20 minutes a day, take your yoga mat and just relax. And if you'd like to see what a forest bathing view of the world looks like, it's pretty much like this. Ah. One of the absolute best ways to reconnect with nature is by eating the stuff. We can go out and forage so many amazing wild plants which are both healthy and enable us to learn more about nature around us. And here I've got an absolute classic which is almost certainly on your doorstep within five minutes walk of your house wherever you are in the country and it's got more vitamins and minerals than either spinach or broccoli and it's called stinging nettle. Let's take a look at it. So I'm going to give you one top tip for picking stinging nettles because you don't need gloves to do it. Now if I hold the stinging nettle here up close to you, hopefully you can see that the actual stings running up the um, branches here are pointing outwards and upwards. So if you pick your stinging nettle by running your fingers up the stem and then pinching off the tops, you won't get stung. And it's the tops that are the really tasty, delicious part of the plant, especially in springtime, April and May, uh, and also in autumn when the plant throws up new um, seedlings, um, which are also have very, very fresh leaves. And these taste great. You can cook them like you would cook spinach. So you can have them in soups or as a side uh, vegetable. You can cook them in butter. They taste really great and they are just so good for you. So take advantage of the wonderful nettle. But what I also like about nettles is by picking them, we actually help to regenerate the plant and that is good for wildlife. And the reason for that is that caterpillars are beautiful butterflies like comma butterflies and small tortoise shells feed exclusively on stinging nettles and they love the fresh new green leaves. So the more we pick the tops, the more fresh uh, green leaves come up, the more caterpillars we have and that is fantastic for wildlife. More caterpillars on stinging nettles means more hedgehogs who love to hang out in the, around these plants, as do frogs and toads, so it's just wonderful for wildlife. Good for us and good for nature. I hope you've enjoyed our five top tips to live a wilder life and get closer to nature. If you'd like to find out more about our work uh, with communities, individuals and rewilding, please visit our website at wilderlife.org. And in the meantime, enjoy nature. Goodbye.